Hey everyone, let's make a StarCraft 2 map. In the last episode, we made the switch from modern warfare to sci-fi mech warfare. So in this episode, we're going to work on the weapon system. Instead of one weapon firing, we're going to allow players to have multiple weapons on their mech simultaneously. Each of these weapons will have a role they fulfill, and they'll also have their own advantages and disadvantages. For example, missiles will be able to deal a lot of damage for their weight, but these missiles can be shot down with point defenses, and you can only carry a limited amount of them. So let's get into this video's discussion. In practically every game on the market, you will have some things in the game that have a specific role they fulfill. Everything has a specific purpose, so things like potions or med packs will heal you, armor will usually reduce incoming damage, and various firearms will have different ranges, different damage outputs, and differing magazine capacities. The ideal game would have nothing that becomes useless or redundant. So maybe you can upgrade your weapon. Maybe you have an initial weapon, but instead of replacing it completely, what you do is add certain upgrades to it, so this weapon will still be useful later on in the game. You should always have a reason to obtain these weapons. After all, if there's no reason to obtain them when you can use something else, why bother having it in the game in the first place? So there should be a reason to have something. If you take a look at a game like Quake 3 Arena, all of the weapons have a specific purpose in mind. For example, the lightning gun is very good at close range because of its rate of fire and its damage output. But you can only fire this up to a certain range, then it just disappears. So something like the railgun would be very good at long range because of its high damage and accuracy. But it takes so long to fire again that it's basically useless at a very close range. So the lightning gun and railgun go together very well. The rocket launcher does well at medium range, not at a short range because you can take damage from it as well, but also not at a long range because the rockets move too slow to have any sort of impact. The rocket launcher is also used for navigation, such as rocket jumping from one platform to another. In another game, this is one of my favorite games of all time, StarCraft. Every single unit has a purpose, but this depends on the matchup. For example, in a Terran vs Protoss, Vultures and Siege Tanks are the core composition for Terran. The Siege Tanks have the damage and the range, and they're needed to kill off the Protoss Dragoons, but these are expensive. Vultures are cheap, in fact they're the most cost effective units in the game. These units can lay spider mines all over the map, and they act as a meat shield to protect your expensive tanks. Vultures can be easily replaced, but the tanks cannot. In general, StarCraft does have some useless units, such as the Protoss Scouts or the Zerg Queens. And by useless, I don't mean they're completely dead weight. The problem with these units is that they're too cost ineffective for what they do. So players end up never using them ever. So when you look at Quake 3 Arena and StarCraft, the way these games apply to Deep Blue is that everything in the game should have a specific role they fulfill. There should always be a reason to choose one weapon or another, or a reason to choose one mech over another. Of course, there will be some overlapping roles, though it's not enough to make anything useless. We're going to be putting in a lot of weapons in this map. But first things first, we need to create the weapon system. First, we will plan out how all of the data will be arranged. The image you see here is what's referred to as an entity relationship diagram. This basically lays out how the data will be structured. So for example, the weapon types define what a weapon is, it defines its ammo capacity, its accuracy and recoil, the cooldown, its weight, its damage, and the amount of ammo to fire that weapon. The weapons define the state of the weapon itself. So this keeps track of the weapon's current ammo and its recoil and accuracy. The player stats define the state of the player itself. So when we're switching weapons, it's going to keep track of the selected weapon index, which is what we use to keep track of the weapon groups. We also keep track of the player's kills, deaths, and assists here. And the weapons group is, of course, the weapons group. This keeps track of all of the weapons in this group, as well as how many weapons there are. If you have no idea how I laid all of this information out, or what these symbols mean, 
don't worry about it. This is some high level design document stuff, so if you're just a gamer, you actually don't need to worry about this. Just leave all of the designing and the planning to me. But I think it's still nice to see all of this, just so you know what goes into it. Next, I also designed a new flowchart. That's because the old one I showed you, which is shown here, this is actually incomplete. So I actually had to create a new one, and I split this into two pages. Again, if you have no idea what any of this means, don't worry about it. But if you do decide to go into the StarCraft 2 map editor, this may be useful to you. At the very least, it's very useful to me. The thing is, all of these effects are tied together similar to a relational database, hence the diagram from before, but for the actual linking of these effects, I find this diagram to be much easier to understand. For the second page, I put all the actors here. The actors can be best described as the data editor's trigger editor, or something to that extent. Basically, what happens is, in the event, you define the actions when that event occurs. So if a particular unit is spawned, in this case our projectile, we can define an asset that goes with it. So in this case, if our projectile is created, it will also create the model and associate it with that projectile. We can also define sound effects. In this case, we tie the sound effects to the effect we created. So when the projectile is launched, we play this particular sound set. And what a sound set is, is, well, a set of sound effects. And the game will pick one of these sound effects to play back when the projectile is launched. But enough of these diagrams, let's go into the data editor. So all of these effects you see here will line up with what you saw in the diagram previously. All that's needed is to fill out the information that you saw in the diagram, and that's really it. There are more fields than what you saw in the diagram, but the thing is, everything you saw in the diagram is the only information that needs to be changed. Everything else can be left as is. One thing I would like to point out is the detailed view. The editor will freeze for a few seconds, and I find this really annoying because I have to change to different effects very frequently, so the entire thing freezing just pisses me off. But I also found out that when you switch to the table view, the freezing doesn't occur. It just lists all the values in a table, similar to how it was in Warcraft 3. I also noticed that when I'm switching to different effects in the detailed view, there's no activity on my hard drive. Every time I switch to a different effect, the entire detail view is rebuilt from scratch. I have no idea why this is, but this really pisses me off. So most of the time, I'm actually using the table view. But I still use the detail view from time to time because all of the information is laid out in an easy to read fashion. I'm hoping Blizzard will fix this in the future. Now it's time to show you these weapons. The laser battery will be the meat and potatoes of your weapons. Every shot will be able to deal a good amount of damage, and you have infinite ammo, so this is going to be a good weapon for staying out in the field. It's also a very light weapon, so there's going to be a lot of room for these on your mech. But the problem with the lasers is that they'll have a long cooldown, they're going to generate some heat, and they have a short range. For the purposes of this video, I actually decreased the cooldown for the lasers, just so that you have something to see. But the actual cooldown will be longer than this. So this will be a very good basic weapon. You'll pretty much see this on every single mech in the game. The Viper missiles will have a very high damage output. They have a high amount of damage per volley, which is two missiles every time you fire. They will have a low cooldown, they generate very little heat, and it's a very light weapon, so you can have a lot of these on your mech as well. The downside to this weapon is they have very limited ammo, so for example, you'll have trouble sustaining your lane with this weapon, and because it's a missile weapon, point defenses will be very effective in defending against them. 
Also, this type of missile will have a very short range. This will be around the same range as the laser battery. Still, it's going to be a very good weapon when you're freshly stocked. This is the weapon that you've seen in the previous episodes. It's going to have a high rate of fire, it has a high ammunition capacity, and this weapon will generate very little heat. So you can just fire this weapon without worrying about ammunition or heat. The downside to this is that it has a very low damage output. So this weapon will be less effective against mechs, especially those with a higher armor count. So it's not recommended to fully stock up on machine guns, but having one or two of them will still be very good. Machine guns will be very useful to have while you're waiting for the cooldowns of your other weapons to expire. Keep in mind though, these weapons are not mutually exclusive. You have to mix and match what weapons you'll be using for the game. And there's going to be many more weapons to choose from. These are just the three weapons that are implemented at the moment. As we progress further in Deep Blue, there will be many more weapons. Weapons with higher damage outputs, longer ranges, longer cooldowns, weapons with special buffs and debuffs, even special equipment such as sensors and armor to go along with your mech. But before we can move along, we have to finish the modular weapon system. We just had to implement these three weapons so that we have something to use for testing. We still have to do the triggers in the system, so that when we fire, we go from one weapons group to the next. So in one group we would have missiles, in another we would have the lasers, and then in another we'd have the machine guns. And then every time we fire, it switches to the different weapon groups based on their cooldowns. So while we're waiting for the lasers to recharge, we're firing our missiles, we're firing our machine guns, and then when the lasers cool down, we can fire those. That's happening in the next episode. So until then, look forward to it.